Ungdomsradio. Hello everyone, you are listening to You've Got Five Options show with Marta and Anna. Join us while we are solving yet another life challenge. And if you decide to share your problem with us, yours can be next. Hello everyone, this is Marta. And this is Anna. And there is no lesson. And there is no lesson. Yeah, I, I think that you have noticed that every couple of episodes Lasse is not here because we are recording uh, within the time frame where he has to attend a super important secret meeting at the radio station. Yeah, so no lesson with us today. Yes. On this episode, but we will do our best. Yes, because we are the friendship experts and we are having a friendship related challenge. And this is the second part of uh, that solution where we are uh, giving Caroline some inspiration on how she can approach her delicate situation with her friend. And uh, I do want to apologize for any background noises of coming from that secret meeting that apparently is not all that secret. No, no, because uh, it's actually quite uh, quite out there in open and actually too much in open. Yeah, I think we have to talk with them about the acoustics of the studio. Yeah, that would definitely be beneficial. Because I, I feel like I'm, you know, like I'm uh, next to some kind of a banquet or wedding because there is so much cutlery going on and some kind of laughs and stuff so yeah it's a it's a meeting connected with lunch that's why so many sounds yeah but anyway we do apologize and we hope that you can still enjoy listening to our show and yeah let's just jump right let's into it let's just do it so i will read the challenge sent to us by caroline at least this is her uh, name that she has stated and again as marta mentioned if you would like to hear Listen to part one. Please visit our YouTube channel where we are posting all of our radio show episodes or you also can subscribe to our podcast. Definitely just open your mobile, install or open your podcast app, find You've Got Five Options and you'll never miss any of our cool episodes. Again, never again. Okay, so I will read the challenge again because, you know, it's it's important. Okay, I have had a very close friend for many years. A few months ago, there was a misunderstanding which involved our children and husbands, and that has spoiled our so far deep and honest friendship. We have been in contact several times, but it's not the same. It's a friendship that I value a lot, so I have reached out a couple of times, but my friend seems colder. I am not sure if I should give her some space or confront her directly. It's a delicate matter because it involves people we both love. I am not sure what to do. What would you advise? So uh, we have given two first options to Caroline in our previous episode. And the first option was put empathetic glasses on. You know her well. What may be the deeper reasons for her avoiding the contact? And we have also taken option number two, confront her in a loving way initiate an open conversation. So these were the two first options that we have already discussed and we encourage you to listen to them if you haven't. And today we will be looking into give her space, wait and see what happens. Option number four, let her go. Maybe that friendship no longer serves you. And option number five, play pen friends, write her a letter. Sounds exciting, Marta. And we definitely do hope that this will be a valuable uh, episode for you. So I just was reflecting on it as friendship is a really important part of our lives. And as we were preparing for our live show that is also on friendship, I actually have seen scientific proofs that message to the world. Friendship has significant positive impact on our life Mm -hmm. on our health so it's both on like immediate health but also the life length people who have many friends they have more chance to live longer yes because they have people that can pick them up from a floor like when they fall down like imagine you have no friends and you i don't know have a health issue have no one to call and here you can call 10 people of course this is a 
kind of a joke, but actually it can come handy to know a lot of people and have friends. So uh, we very much encourage you to listen to our live show that is available on our YouTube channel so that you find out more fun, interesting facts about friendship and uh, listen to our fun episode. But now we will go into option number three. Give her space. Wait and see what happens. So we touched upon giving space a little bit in our previous episode. And of course, that is an obvious option to consider. If you have been trying to get in contact with someone a couple of times and that person is not really responding, probably giving space is something worthwhile considering. Yeah, I totally agree, especially that in a light of what Lassa said in a previous episode, you know, that sometimes it might be that people have their own things going on and they are going through some stuff. You don't have to take everything very personally. Of course, here it's difficult because you indeed had a misunderstanding, but you know, some people come and then go and then come back again and you know space is always something that could be beneficial you know a time to rest a time to reevaluate, a time to get your emotions together for both sides so it's quite all right option i would say i would say it's it has very strong benefits mm -hmm. so first of all you know an obvious benefit is that you give both of you the place and the time to actually reflect on what went wrong. Yeah, what has really happened? Why does it cause so much pain? What's the real reason for you not being so close anymore? And just simply, you know, reflect on it. But it also gives you time and space to reflect on whether that friendship still really serves you, which is something that you will need in the next option to consider. Are you really missing that friend? What exactly are you missing about that friendship? So it gives you that, you know, place to reflect on it. Yeah, it's almost the same like taking a break in a relationship sometimes when you have to figure out some stuff. But Marta, then when I think about that, comparison, I have a question for you. Do you think there can be any disadvantages of this approach for Caroline? I would say that there is a definite risk that if both of you are so good at giving space, uh, that no one then reaches you out. astronauts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you are both just giving space to each other, mm -hmm. you might not get in contact. And you, yeah, and you may not clear valid friendship, <laughs> yeah. a good relationship in your life because you have been given too much space. So mm -hmm. definitely there is some risk to it. And also, of course, giving space can come with some timing, definite timing. So you can give some space for a few weeks, for example, mm -hmm. and then you can uh, try to reach out again. Another risk that I could think of is in a case where there is actually something very different happening in that friend's life and that friend is actually going through a bigger issue that is actually not related to you uh, she may feel abandoned so if you don't reach out uh, sometimes being a bit cold is a sign that someone is struggling with something big and that they are having a trouble to be able to reach out they are withdrawing because they are going through so much so much more that they can handle right now so if you do not reach out to them don't let's say fight for that friendship they can feel abandoned and you can actually create such a big space between the two of you that may not be possible you know to make the distance <laughs> smaller yeah. again yeah, I, I totally agree. And I actually would even add to this that that's why the knowledge of your friend and the personality is so important here, because sometimes I think, Marta, you don't even need to have a big other big issues or other big challenges in your life. Sometimes people are colder because maybe they feel hurt or offended and they actually uh, would like you to do the job, could be, or just even, you know, the fact that, okay, so she resigned just like this. She doesn't talk to me. Uh, she doesn't want to fix it, you know? So some people don't recognize space as space, but they recognize space as I don't care about you. So there are definitely some risks here, but I also also think that this depends on the personality and also on how you would approach it. So maybe you could actually just drop a word that you know. I have a feeling that our friendship is going through some different interesting 
period and we are a bit colder, maybe we should have some time to think about it. So basically, sounds stupid, announcing or not like disappearing, just like totally not not contacting. And that's the idea of space, but just maybe expressing, you know, that maybe we should have some space from each other. I don't know. What do you think, Marta? Have you ever tried doing something like that in no. a friendship? No. Nope. I nope. have, no, I haven't either. At least, of course, I have had situations where I was going distant with some of my friends, but I was living it this way. No, for me, I guess it's very simple. For me, it's either that friendship is worthwhile saving mm -hmm. and I can give space, of course, temporarily, mm -hmm. but then I will go sooner or later and confront or it is the case where I see that that friendship has been over. Mm -hmm. I have never tried like uh, announcing, yeah. you know, let's take some time out because to me it produces some bad emotions in me. Yeah. You know, when I think about it, when I try to imagine mm -hmm. that I have to tell a close friend, you know, things have not been going so well, let's take some time <laughs> off. It actually really feels like preparing for a breakup. So. <laughs> exactly. No, but you know, that th the whole thing is that some people may actually want that, you know, there are different types of friendships in this world. And I will not judge which model is the best. But there are people who like in relationships in friendships are also codependent. And if you have a friendship that is uh, not, co yes, who is more codependent than interdependent, things are really being taken uh, very personally. And you almost feel like it's a relationship just minus, you know, the romantic part. So uh, it all depends. And I think it's quite difficult for us to, to imagine this because I know you, I'm not the only friend you have. Believe it or not, guys, Marta, Marta has a lot of friends, even if her levels are high, five of five subscribers. Oh, yeah, we're so smart and funny. I not only know you in a relation to, to me or our friendship, but also how you manage your friendships and you know me as well. And it's it, for, for us, it would be weird to announce to someone, let's have a time out because we, we have a different type of friendships. You know, I think most of our friendships are very interdependent or just like very uh, relaxed, granting a lot of freedom. Uh, but there are people who are in codependent friendships. So for that situation, maybe that would be good to announce it or agree on it, you know, just trying to think out of the box and really step out of my own experiences. Yeah, it could also invoke a reaction from a friend like, what? What are you talking about? I was just very busy and I have so much on my mind. I didn't notice that we were getting any cold. <laughs> yes, and I'm colder because I have a flu. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. That's That can also be a trigger for discussion. Yeah, yeah so definitely some uh, points to it. And as we will end up our episode saying that uh, you should definitely ask yourself a question question of what are other creative ways of resolving that conflict, we will definitely any anything that you feel could help is a good idea. So no bad ideas here, only the ones that you feel that exactly. are the right ones yes. for you. Like so. a dancing routine with I'm sorry in the background or boombox uh, in front of the window playing her a song, please forgive me. Any creative idea will do. Yeah, or just calling, look, I have a glass, uh, I have a bottle of wine and... Uh, and I need help. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I need help. It cannot be drunk alone or whatever, yeah. you know, whatever will do. But anyway, we do have an option number four, mm -hmm. which is let her go. Maybe that friendship no longer serves you. Yeah, that sounds quite brutal at first. Yeah, it does. But, you know, not all the friendships are meant to last a lifetime. Exactly. And I think I even said it at the beginning of the first episode that, you know, it exactly, that's the whole point that sometimes we stick in a relationships, friendships, because we are used to or because we I, I think this is actually how frenemies sometimes are being created. So basically, your friends that are your friends, but they make you feel bad about you uh, for some reason due, due to their behavior, and you keep on coming back to that relation. So I think that sometimes like in relationships, we are in some friendships because of reasons like comfort zone, being used to someone or being afraid we will not find other friends. 
Yeah, it's a really, really valid question to ask yourself because the answer to that question is really the determining factor here on how to approach the situation. It's a really worthwhile analysis, like how important is that friendship in your life really? Meaning how much does it bring to you? Because it can be that you are meeting even often, but it's just plain meetings. You don't actually gain that much out of that friendship. Maybe you don't grow uh, in that friendship at all. Maybe it's just plain same. And uh, then if it additionally produces some bad blood and problems with your partners and children and so on, that's really, really worthwhile considering. Or on the other hand, asking yourself, does that friendship serve me? And like, hell yeah, that has been my best friend forever. And we have been through so much and she has helped me so many times and we have amazing time together and so on. Could tell you like, hell yeah, I'm gonna go and reach out to her and get my courage on and uh, open a dialogue and so on. So it's a really, really valid question to ask yourself like a little analysis, you know. Mind dream time. Olé! How much do you gain? How much do you give? How good that relationship is for you? Yeah, I totally agree. And now when you were talking about it, I also thought that I would add an additional spin on it. Maybe you don't have to let go of your friend, but you have to let go of a type of a friendship you had in the past. And here I specifically think about the fact that Caroline mentioned she knows the friend for years. So maybe there is a possibility that they were friends before they got families. It could be that the friendship enters a new phase where hanging out with husbands and kids not necessarily is uh, a good idea. Maybe, you know, there is too many relations to manage. Uh, so uh, what about, for instance, uh, trying to make this relation more independent from the families? So instead of meeting with husbands and kids all the time, maybe at the beginning you would try to meet just the two of you, just to, you know, get back to your old, I don't know what routine you might have, a wine routine or whatsoever. But maybe it's not so much about letting go of a friend, but the friendship you had, because that friendship was very much un entangled, like it, it, it became a bonus friendship. So we meet with husbands and, and with kids, maybe it's time to actually take out the husbands and kids and just have a friendship, just the two of you. It's definitely a very valid consideration to have. And definitely I would very much uh, consider at least starting up with clarifying the situation between the two of you and then seeing whether the husbands and the kids can be brought into the picture. It should not be a taboo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it should not be like kind of, uh, you know, forgotten and left behind. Mm -hmm. You should definitely talk about it. But if you come to a conclusion sooner or later that there is actually not a good energy when mm -hmm. you bring your partners and children into the picture, that there is simply, you know, this that you love each other and that you are two really, really good friends doesn't mean that uh, your partners and your children have to feel the same way. So it is definitely an option to consider to see if that particular friendship is more the two of you kind of friendship. Yeah. yeah. If you do come to a conclusion that this friendship actually doesn't serve you, that you actually grew out of it, that you have, you know, maybe it's not the first time something like this happens, or maybe it has to always be you who has to reach out many, many times. Maybe you are tired of doing that. Maybe for any kind of reason, you come to a conclusion that you actually are ready to let go of that friendship. You know, acknowledge that it's not easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> acknowledge that it's still some kind of a goodbye. Yes. And especially you said that it was a friendship that you have valued for many years. So actually the option, the, the last option, option number five, which we will talk about in a moment, it's also a good option when you actually decide to let go of a friendship. Yeah. So we will just jump right into 
that last option, mm -hmm. which is play pen friends, write her a letter. So you were really uh, excited about that option, as you told us I in was. a previous... Uh, and I will tell you why. Yeah, in a previous episode, so go for it. Uh, I, I was excited because... I will tell you why I was excited. I was excited because last year I was quite a lot in Poland. And one day when I was in my home, home home where I was raised, I found a box of letters. And I found a letter from Marta that was <laughs> five pages long letter written by hand and it was so touching because it was actually a letter that you have written to me when we had a conflict a conflict i forgot about it had something to do with my uh, first boyfriend uh, that's a story for a totally separate uh, <laughs> even for a live show i would say but we, we we didn't went into a conflict but you were i think trying to help me to get out of that relationship and there were some other misunderstandings and i have received that letter from marta five pages long letter and it was so honest and so touching because you know she she wrote how she feels and she uh, wrote how she would like to help me and she also loved you wrote there that you love me by the way i would like to tell you so uh, yeah and it was it was just amazing and i think there were more letters that we were exchanging and i totally forgot about it because it, i think we were what like 20 it was like whoa so we were doing the pen friends in a past and i think the reason was at that time we were not so good in open loving discussions and confrontations open loving confrontations and it was easier for us to use this that's why i was saying that i think the fifth option is fantastic if you are unable to have the loving conversation very open and honest one because you can pour out your feelings on a paper first of all you can express yourself because many times you know conversation is a dyna dynamic so someone will say something someone will respond back and you might fall easily into some kind of a misunderstanding again or even argument when you write down everything you also have a better way of structuring your own thoughts and it's also a way to rethink your own feelings so it's a fantastic way to all, all, way to also self-reflect but uh, yes marta we were coping like this with misunderstandings in the past we were writing letters to each other even if we were living like on what um, neighborhoods that were close to each other and it was not the time when we went to denmark you were still in the same city and we were seeing each other almost every day <laughs> because we were going to the same university and yet you wrote me a letter so and it worked so really like um, yeah good job marta so you you live you you lived uh, you are a living example that this option works especially when people are unable to yet have this open conversations which are always difficult they are always difficult even now when we have to discuss something it's like w when you want to tell me something you get stressed because you have to say something and you are not sure you know how to express it and it's it's uncomfortable and it's uncomfortable for the other person because usually I am the one who screws something up. So it's also for me like a stress level because, okay, I feel bad that I, you know, failed at something or Marta is distressed because of me. It's mm. difficult. Now we are doing this in person. But before we could, we were writing letters. Oh, come on. You also sometimes tell me some things. I also screw some things up. Yeah. And I think I am just mad. I also uh, worry about more things. So <laughs> than, than, I I than, than you do. So I probably also have more things that I need to clear. But leaving that behind. Did you love the story that I pull out your letter? <laughs> yeah, you I should actually, see her face. <laughs> uh, actually, I was afraid what kind of letter <laughs> might have I written because yeah. I remember writing many different letters <laughs> and they were very often written on Polish classes <laughs> <laughs> in high school. Yeah, because then you could actually write a letter and pretend that you were making notes. Yes. Yeah, so uh, we were uh, actually, I remember communicating quite a lot, uh, mm -hmm. but that this was mainly funny letters yes. and no no but this one was like really uh pouring my heart out and and trying to reach out 
letter it was beautiful next time i will be in poland i will give it to you okay that would be very so nice you can, you can see what you have written there yeah thank you that would be fun uh, yeah. thing to see but anyway the obvious benefit of uh, writing a letter you have anna already said you actually have the time and space to pour your emotions to structure your thoughts so you can communicate in a clear way you have the time to actually think like oh is that wording really going to be a good one you can rewrite the letter you can really think about what's the real message that you want to send here. So that's the obvious set of uh, benefits. And of course, the other set of benefits is that you give the time and space to the other person to reflect back on it so that you don't get into that uh, say something, react exactly. <laughs> stuff, but you actually give that uh, space to reflect on what is being uh, really what's the message here yeah. and i did also mention that this letter can not only be used to heal the conflict between the two of you in order to go back to the same level of friendship that you've had before but it is also good to use it when you are actually ready to close the uh, friendship Yeah, because if some relationship has been a really long one and it is evaporating in this kind of, you know, cold way and you don't really know what's going on, it may be actually a thank you letter to someone. That is, that's an amazing idea. Yeah, I haven't tried that before. No, though. although maybe I'll, uh, although maybe after Who this knows? show, some friends will, you know, Marta, you, <laughs> you wrote me a thank you letter <laughs> for the you end know, of the friendship. Marta, I have a whole box of letters. I haven't went through all of them. So let's see what's there. Maybe, maybe I had some <laughs> thank you letters. <laughs> maybe you also had like fuck off letters. I don't know. It's like hard to say, but uh, I have tried uh, goodbye letters and uh, thank you letters, but they were never uh, in relation to friendships, but relationships. I actually have have tried it and and uh, that was a really great thing because sometimes when you uh, want to say some things at the end you don't know how and then you can also ignite the argument and so on so for me it worked really well because I was also able to like look at this with a some sort of perspective and write everything down and be grateful for things that happen and explain my feelings so I have tried it and usually it, it worked very well so dear Caroline we have prepared those five options for you and we hope that you will use them as inspiration to find the best possible way for you to solve that conflict. And uh, definitely we said, you know, like, ask yourself that question. What are other creative ways to resolve that situation? Because the best person to find out the best possible solution is you, because you are the one who knows first yourself and then also your friend so you have the biggest amount of knowledge of that situation and uh, creative solutions are uh, very often very good so you can find a way like uh, we have had some uh, proposals already like uh, getting a boombox and dancing in front of your friend's window for example could very quickly resolve the cold uh, that that would melt my heart Marta, <laughs> if you would do it to me <laughs> so uh, yeah that could uh, you know uh, doing something funny or something out of ordinary out of box it can really break that uh, radio silence <laughs> exactly <laughs> between the very, very smart mm, yeah. radio silence another yeah. you know useful question uh, for helping you choose the best option could be to ask yourself powerful question what would that friend advise you to do in this situation mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. if you imagine telling your friend that you have that situation with another friend, what would she advise to you? Because most likely the advice that she would give to you would be the best one to approach her with. So if you, the, if the answer to that question would be write her a letter, then you would know that this is probably a good way to approach her for you. So this is just, a, you know, a couple of questions that you could ask yourself to help you find the right option. Marta Rodriguez Karpovic, I'm so impressed with the last one. Actually, this is a, a great one, great tip, you know. Imagine what your friend would advise you to do in this situation if that would not be about her. Boom, yeah. nice. Well, questions, I really love them. I think questions are an extremely powerful tool. When we ask questions, we usually get the answers. Yeah. So asking the right question will give us the right answer. So I'm very, very much pro question asking. Mm -hmm. But dear Caroline, 
We hope that you will be able to resolve that conflict in the most positive way for you and your friend. We are keeping our fingers crossed. You'll have that challenge described uh, uh, in a written form. So go ahead and visit uh, the5options.com so that you can find the written version. So all the good luck for you. Thank you and goodbye. Bye bye. You are listening to You've Got 5 Options show, where we solve your life challenges. Remember that you can visit our website, the5options.com, where you can submit your challenge or find our previous challenges. That's all, folks! Du lytter til din lokale radio i Aarhus på FM 98,7 MHz og 89,5 MHz.